Hi guys, so it's me, Nicolette Mashile, and today I'll be talking about Barlow World's Cooler Seasway Triple BEE Scheme. But remember that none of my videos constitute as financial advice. If you are looking for financial advice, please speak to somebody who is certified and registered with the FSCA. And just to extend on that, this video is not meant to be any type of recommendation for you to go out and buy the Barlow World Cooler Seasway shares, but rather to give you an intelligent and qualified understanding of what the shares scheme is actually about so what we did is we went out and spoke to somebody who actually understands the scheme probably a little better than all of us now you guys know my mantra in life we do not invest in things that we do not understand so we spoke to Tepiso Makofane who is the MD of Tamela Group and they are a corporate finance boutique company that helped Barlow World in structuring this deal this is what he had to say so Kula Ciso is a property-backed share scheme. Kula Ciso, the company, which is called Kula Ciso Property Holdings, will acquire 2.9 billion rands worth of properties from Palo World and lease those back to Palo World for the next 10 years. Why would somebody like me want to buy these shares? The big positive for this scheme is that you've got a long-term lease with a blue-chip tenant in the form of Palo World and you've got tangible physical property underpinning the value and um, so that makes it quite different from other schemes in that you you have those two uh, positives physical property and predictable cash flows in the form of the lease that's exactly the next question i was going to ask you what makes it so different from all the other schemes that have come out of the south african market so this scheme is not dependent on share price movement uh, because you're not acquiring shares on the jse that can go up and down depending on what happens if Donald Trump says tweets something that doesn't make sense, <laughs> uh, market reacts, so you don't have that here. Um, property as an investment class doesn't fluctuate as much as shares do, so you've got that uh, physical underpin and you've got the lease, uh, most importantly, because that, that property on its own, if it doesn't give you the cash flows, it's not really worth anything. Yes. In this case, you've got the property and you've got the lease from a blue chip tenant in the form of Palawa. All right, so there's a lock-in period of five years. Yes. Why is that so? The lock-in period for five years, the aim really is to ensure that there is value creation. This is a long-term scheme and this is a long-term game. So in the first five years, the debt would not have been dented. So the aim is that let's give Kula Sizwe enough opportunity to repay some of the debt so that that NAV, the net asset value of the company, starts to increase and then only list the company or allow tradability of the shares. And why is the public offering only made available for black South Africans? This is a BEE scheme. I think uh, everybody is aware of the socio-economic background that we come out of as a country. And Bala World's uh, aim here is to make a societal impact. On the other two components of the scheme, it's important to note that from an employee and management perspective, the scheme is open to everybody. Uh, so for, for staff, it's both black and white, but for the uh, public scheme, it's only open to black people because it is a PE scheme. And how many shares can I buy? The minimum is 250 shares, which cost two, two and a half thousand rands. And there is no real maximum um, because the maximum shareholding in Kula Sizwa is what is available for offer, which is a 16.3 million shares. Okay, so how will the allocation happen? So if I have more money than an, another person, will I get more shares than them? The priority will be given to smaller applicants, so those who are applying for 2,500 rands worth of shares first, because the aim is to make the scheme as broad-based as possible. So it will be on a bottom-up or smallest to largest basis, and so those with too much money <laughs> will be in this case, discriminated against. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. And then what happens if the scheme is undersubscribed or what happens if it becomes oversubscribed? So if it is undersubscribed, the difference between, and there's a minimum. So the minimum, absolute minimum we, we, we aim to get is 120 million. Mm -hmm. So if it's lower than 120 million, the scheme is unsuccessful, so we don't proceed. And the entire 30% that's been made available will be reallocated to Palo World employees who are the other two categories of shareholders. And if only 120 million or 125 million is subscribed for, the difference between the 163 million and whatever we get above 120 million also gets reallocated to employees. 
Maybe let's quickly also speak about the different category of shareholders. You've just touched on a little bit about it. Yes. Why is the public offering only 30% of the company? Of the company, because the two other categories of shareholders is Bala World Management and Bala World Employees. And in, even in those, the total number of participants is about 14,000 people. Mm. So the scheme is broad-based, uh, even without the public scheme. But Bala World's aim was to make sure that it shares the success beyond Bala World mm. uh, to the broader community, and that's why there's a 30% allocated for the black public. You talked a little bit in our live video on Facebook about the, li the, the, the company being possibly listed on a stock exchange after five years. Yes. Can you take us through that? So the aim, as in indicated earlier, is that for the five, first five years, lock-in, no tradability in the shares. From year six onwards, the aim is to list Kula Sizwe on a restricted exchange. And what that means is that it's, a, it's an exchange that allows trading of the shares among black people. And there are other schemes out there, uh, as people might be aware of where MTN Zakele, mm. the previous scheme was, listed on the JSE, but on, this, on, on the component of the JSE that allows tradability among black people only, the Vodacom Yewayoti scheme is on a similar scheme. Mm. Sasol is on a similar scheme. Uh, the Putumanati, which is a multi-choice scheme, is on a different platform called Easy Equities. Mm. So that's a different platform, but again, allows tradability only among black people. And only after 15 years will it then be open to all South Africans? Yes. So okay. after 15 years, anybody can trade in cooler of shares, uh, black and white, um, and that so the restriction on, on tradability falls away completely. Will the scheme pay dividends out to me in the first five years? In the first five years, no. The priority, in fact, in, even in the first 10 years, will be to reduce the debt. To reduce. We start on day one with 80% of the acquisition price being funded by debt. So the aim is to use the income which comes from the rental from Bala World to reduce that debt. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Piso. Thank you. You've made this so much more easier for us to understand. So that is what Tepiso had to say about the scheme and I think he's really broken down what the scheme is actually about. But if you do still need a more simpler explanation, please do stay tuned in to this video because that's exactly what I am going to try and do. I'm going to summarize everything that Tepiso has said in much more simpler terms. So let's start with what is actually Kula Sizwe. Basically, Barlow World is creating a company called Kula Sizwe and what they are going to be doing is that they will be selling 2.9 billion rands worth of their real estate which they are currently operating some of their operations from to Kula Sizwe at a 5% discount. That's literally what is actually happening. So when you are buying those shares, you are basically buying equity into a company that Barla World is going to start off with 2.9 billion rands worth of property, again at a 5% discount. So I'm sure by now you're asking yourself this question of how will Kula Sizwe be able to afford 2.9 billion rands worth of real estate from Barla World? Well, this is how it's going to happen. Kula Sizwe is going to raise equity from three structures which are going to be holding shares within Kula Sizwe. The first structure is the management trust, which is Bala World's management team, and they will hold 38% of Kula Sizwe shares. The second structure will be employees trust of Bala World, which is made up of 14,000 or plus of Bala World's employees, and they will hold 32% of Kula Sizwe. And the third one is the black public, which these shares are specifically geared towards so that means that you and i if we do decide to buy these baller world shares we will make up that 30 percent which is owned by the black public hence why there is a public offering now remember that that public offering is only open between the 10th of april up until the 31st of may so on the 34th first of may by four o'clock the public offering will unfortunately expire so if you are going to be deciding to buy these shares you need to get in before that but how do you do that you need to go on the website www.barlowworldcoolercesware.com and you actually need to apply as somebody who has an interest to buy these shares 
how many shares do you actually have to buy? Well, you need to buy 250 shares, which are all retailing at 10 rand a share. So basically, you are going to need 2,500. You can be a black individual, or you can be a company that is black owned, or at least majority black owned, or you could be an informal group, which is stock files, and sort of any other group, as long as the majority is black owned. And together, you guys can raise that 2,500 rand, and you will be able to buy your shares but now i know the other second concern that people have and that is what happens if there is somebody who's got far more money than the rest of us will that person then be able to buy all the shares that are available in the public offering well no so what barlow world is going to be doing together with kula Cizwe is they're going to use a bottom-up approach so anybody that wants to buy 250 250 shares those are the people who get the shares allocated first to them and anything else that is left after that will then go to everybody else who wants more than 250. Now obviously Tepiso has tried to explain what would happen if the scheme is oversubscribed. Well if the scheme is oversubscribed that is absolutely great news for everybody that would have invested in it because that means that the scheme does go ahead and the black public but the black public will also eventually be able to benefit from it right. So if it is oversubscribed, what Kula Cizo will do is that they will allocate the shares after the 31st of May and any excess money will then be refunded to those who have deposited their excess money. Okay, Sharp. Now Kula Cizo has bought this real estate, what then happens? Do they need to go out there and actually find tenants? How will they make their money? Why would I want to invest in a company that's just sitting with real estate and might not actually have tenants? We've seen many times where people actually buy properties and struggle to find tenants. Well, that is what makes the scheme super special because what is actually going to happen is that Barlow World is going to go into 10-year leases with Kula Cizo to actually let out those properties or lease those properties and that lease agreement is going to be escalated by 8% upfront so every single year it will escalate by 8% that is absolutely amazing because that then guarantees cash flow to Kula Cizwe. in other words Kula Cizwe will probably be able to pay off that debt portion that they are going to be funding to buy these properties by year 12 this is all information that you can find on www.barlowworldcoolercesware.com. In the prospectus, you will find all the figures of how much the properties actually cost and what the figure looks like after 5% has been reduced at which is the price that Cooler Seasware will be buying this real estate uh, properties from Barlow World. So basically what you are going to be doing is you are going to be buying equity into a company that will have 2.9 billion rands worth of real estate. So how will Kula Cizwe guarantee any value for me as a shareholder if I do decide to invest in their shares? Well basically Kula Cizwe will be paying off the debt in the next couple of years through the cash flow that they will be receiving as rentals from Barlow World. Remember, I said that for them to fund this, they need to acquire 80% of debt, which is 2.2 billion rand. So they obviously need to spend the next couple of years paying off that loan plus the interest that will be charged by the financial institutions. And according to their projections, also stated in their prospectus, this will be projected to be done over 12 years. So after 12 years, Kula Cizwe, once it is complete, paid off its loan it will start being able to actually acquire more assets for the company depending obviously on management strategy and also remember as a shareholder you will be able to attend the annual general meetings and your voice can be heard in terms of how you want the company to actually grow another thing to remember is that there will be a lock-in period of five years so if you do decide to buy Barlow World Kula Cizwe shares there will be a lock-in period for five years and after five years you will be able to buy more Kula Cizwe shares if you so feel just like you would any other investment except that it will still Still be restricted to the black public for them to be able to trade these shares. So Barlow World is thinking that they will list Kula Cizwe on one of their listed and rest but restricted JSE listings.